So, firstly, it's a great pleasure to be here. I'm delighted to debate this important topic. Um, so remember, this is uh, OG junctional adenocarcinoma. It's not esophageal adenocarcinoma, and there's quite a lot of David's data included esophageal cancer, uh, where there is, a, I think, a stronger case for uh, chemoradiation. Um, these are, this is my research funding. Now, this is, this is sort of how I feel about this. <laughs> this is the great picture that was taken from the G7. And um, chemo radiation, he, he's down there and he's, he's really fighting the case. There is, however, an interesting thing, which is the tie is actually the Dutch flag. Because, because clearly, in this case, the Dutch and the, and the Americans are very close. Um, really, just to, to get the, the ball rolling, actually, a lot of our, our trials have, have typically uh, included OG junction and esophageal cancers within uh, the randomization process. And this varies across the clinical trials. And so when you analyze these studies, you do need to take this into account. Um, the two trials which uh, did change practice, uh, French uh, and, and British, and uh, they both showed that giving chemotherapy before and after surgery in gastric and OG cancer had a significant impact on survival. So these did change practice. That was good. Um, now, the question, of course, is has practice moved on again? Well, undoubtedly it has. And uh, these data were, were presented at uh, uh, ASCO and ESMO last year. And the really exciting thing about this was that we had a further delta on uh, survival. So there's a further uplift of nearly 9% uh, on the prognosis uh, for these patients if they receive flawed chemotherapy. But the other thing I'd like you to, to draw your attention to, of course, is that there's still a large number of patients actually die of systemic disease. So here we're not talking about good prognosis rectal cancer. We're talking about a disease that, that largely kills people through systemic failure, and that's the great shame. And what we're trying to do is improve Local control, of course, but impact on systemic failure. What does perioperative chemotherapy do? Well, firstly, it does make the tumor smaller, and it does lead to downstaging. And here are the trials I can cite. For example, MAGIC, the French study, the FLOT trial, all showing that R0 resection rates increase from the use of chemotherapy. And incidentally, we have to be very careful about comparing R0 resection rates with, in 2018 with 20 years ago. The pathology is now much more robust, much more stringent. It also depends on how you define R0. For example, in the UK studies, it's tumor uh, either at or within one millimeter or two millimeters of the margin. So this does make a difference to R0. Comparisons between trials can be problematic. Now, interestingly, with preoperative chemotherapy, there is no increase in postoperative complications. And that's a key point when considering that and contrasting it with chemo radiation. The other interesting thing is when you look at path complete remission rates, we're also seeing that FLOT is driving that agenda further forward. So, for example, in the randomized phase two study, the path CR rate had gone up to 16%. R0 is associated with a better prognosis. Uh, and these two slides here, one from STO3, one from OEO5, the top line is the R0 patients. There's nearly 2,000 patients in these two slides. And they both are compelling that R0 is definitely a good objective. Uh, and if you achieve R0, you get better outcomes. But of course, that's also not just about R0, it's about tumor biology. And gaining good response within the primary tumor generally means you're treating micrometastatic disease. PATH-CR is also associated with improved survival. 
And these are data from uh, uh, STO3, again, 1,000 patients. Uh, the top line showing that, that the Mandar tumor regression grade one or two, one is no tumor, two is minimal tumor, is associated with the best prognosis. However, when you now begin to look at PATH-CR with FLOT, you can see this is in the phase two study, that for example, if you look at the OG junctional tumors, I don't think the mouse is working, but um, the, the GAJ tumors, the PATH-C, the response rates uh, are, are higher than at any other site of disease. Furthermore, with the intestinal type of, of, uh, OG, of, ga of the, the tumors, the path CR rate goes up to 23%. So the interesting thing is that with a very effective systemic treatment, we are beginning to approach uh, the sorts of uh, uh, path CR rates we see in adenocarcinoma of the esophagus with chemoradiation. And this is a, a nice uh, poster that's been presented by one of our fellows, I think, uh, later this week. Uh, we've, at the Royal Marsden, moved over to offering FLOT as our standard treatment outside clinical trials. And we did this recent survey of, of, of sequential patients, and we're actually seeing a path CR rate in 31%. These are relatively small numbers, but I've been very impressed at the quality of the pathological complete response we are seeing with FLOT. And we've used ECX for years, but this is quite an impressive regimen. And the addition of the taxane, possibly oxaliplatin, does make a difference. And this is also reflected uh, in, in this table here. And, and the main thing to, to point out is that if you look at FLOT, then you have path CR rates in the randomized study of 16%. If you take out the adenocarcinoma subgroup from the cross trial, the, the, the pathological CR rate drops to 23%. Whereas, as, as David pointed out, with the squamous tumors, it's 50% of patients have a path CR. So why do we need systemic therapy? Well, most deaths are unfortunately due to systemic disease. And localized adenocarcinoma of the esophagus an OG junction is generally a systemic disease. And there isn't much systemic chemotherapy in the cross regimen. And also, if you look at the risk of uh, metastatic disease, systemic chemotherapy drives down that risk. We clearly need to do a lot better. And the best way to achieve that is by enhancing our systemic treatments. So in summary, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope I've been able to convince you that, that the best and most up-to-date chemotherapy regimens are delivering very similar <coughs> uh, uh, impact on uh, R0 resection rates, complete response rates uh, as the best chemoradiation, uh, but also impacting on systemic disease uh, from day one. Thank you very much.